Podcasters, today is Shaq Day. It sure is, but and it was a great chat. I absolutely loved it. You are going to love it as well. There's a, an extended uh, interview with Sam, Brownie and Shaq on this podcast. We also caught up with Michelle Williams, who uh, is the third member of Destiny's Child, of course. Mar Singer reveal, just in case, you know, a bit of a spoiler alert. I wonder That's what she's doing get, tonight, Tim. Him. What? I wonder what she's doing tonight. See what uh, you've done there, John, because uh, we, cause we re- the return of one of the great segments in radio history. Mm. One of my absolute favourites. What are you so doing? Hard. I'd like to do it every night, but then, you know, it'd lose its charm, I'm mm. sure. What are you doing tonight? Jokes Aren't Funny is uh, is coming up. It was a debacle, skip over it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But if you want a little taste of Shaquille O'Neal yeah. or what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Shaq. That's, oh. you, you're going you're to hear that a lot this podcast. Listen on. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Oh, good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to Good morning, your... Christine. Did you say Wednesday? Wednesday, bump day. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Shaq day. Let's not beat around day, the bush. Sorry. Uh, we met the big man yesterday. <gasps> it was unbelievable. What did he smell like? Wealth? Uh, yes, it was dripping off him. No, you know, he, he went to a shishkish, uh, he went to a tobacco joint on what? the lane in Greenvale. Can what? you believe that? They said, oh, Shaq's just running a little bit late. What? He just dropped in at a, at a tobacco shop in Greenvale on the way in. Sam's going to love that because he loves huge global names appearing in unusual Melbourne yes. suburbs. Yeah. Like well, that's Dolly Parton did. in Belgrave. Yeah. Um, Shaq now in Greenvale. Yeah. And there's another big one too. Someone huge was in Bandura. What was he buying darts? Yes. He can get darts from well, no, anywhere. No, I think shishka. Ah, you know, the flavoured tobacco. Shisha, the flavoured tobacco. Yeah. He was on the way in from Melbourne Airport. He arrived yesterday morning. Really? And then uh, came in and did the interview. But he's a monster. Okay. As you can imagine, ask him how much he benched. Yeah. What? <laughs> yes. Yes. We'll, yes, we'll wait for the answer. What time we'll is play, the interview? We're going to play it after eight o'clock. Fantastic. One more thing. Uh, he's a when you man. when you walked into the room, what was the energy like? Uh, well, he walked into the room, oh. and uh, he walked past the room, and he came back, and he gave me a wink. What? Ah. Uh, I loved it. A butcher's wink a butcher's from Shaq. Jeez, I was up and about. He wasn't that impressed with Sam, but yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. You know, fair, he fair, fair, fair. Sam had to sort of try and win him over. And then we got a photo at the end of it, so we're going to put it on our Insta page later in the day Fantastic. just to compare. Sam looks like a little runt compared to him. I actually matched up not too bad. Oh, yeah? Not too bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought. It wasn't as bad as it seemed because it was the first time I've really craned my neck in life. I can't wait for this. Swanee, make no mistake that we all... Oh, Shaq! We all love Shaq. I love yeah, that. Yeah. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Ready to make up for missed holidays with whatif.com? You gotta love an Aussie winter getaway. But bring on spring. Yes. Jump on the What If app to book hotels, holiday rentals, flights and more. What if it's Aussie for travel? Good morning, Melbourne. Christy Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Shaq on the show today and Michelle from Destiny's Child. Pretty good morning. I started playing Cluedo yesterday. The kids are right into it at the moment. Cluedo's one of my favourites. Original Cluedo or kids Cluedo? Uh, no, the original Cluedo. Right. You got it from Kmart and... It was... Um, like Professor Plum, Colonel Mustard. Absolutely. Miss Scarlet. Miss Scarlet. Miss Peacock. Captain Peacock, isn't it? Oh, no, that's no, Miss, from... Miss um, Peacock. Being served? Where, who else are the characters, anyway? If you remember them. Colonel Mustard, have you said Mustard? that? You said Mustard. Uh, and does it come with the little weapons? The I Reverend. Love it. Reverend Green. Oh, Reverend yes. Green. Um, the lead piping mm. and the rope and... Knife. Yes, absolutely. Oh, so good. The, the dagger. The dagger, dagger, brother. The dagger. Uh, Reverend Plum. Mm. No, not Reverend. Professor yeah, Plum. Professor Plum. Reverend Green. Yeah. Seems to me like he'd be a bit of a pants man. Oh, I agree. Really? Don't you well said, mate. Well oh, said. He's sharp. He's yeah. well dressed. Good looking. And what's, young. He, what's he doing rocking up to an orgy? What are they all doing rocking up to an orgy? I Absolutely. agree. I was always sus on Reverend Green because I'm like, what are you doing there? You're either after a good time, if you know what I mean, and you're a reverend. Yes. You're not supposed to be. That's right. Or you're a murderer. Mm. You're also not supposed to be that person. Exactly. <laughs> Sounds like a fun time. But I, I haven't played for years. I wouldn't have played for. Best part of, I reckon, 25, maybe 30 years. And isn't it amazing the way the muscle memory kicks in? Oh, yeah. Well, the competitiveness the, kicks the in, don't you? Three cards in the sheet. Three cards in the sheet. And then you've got the little clue cards because yes. you roll the dice. Oh, boy. And then if it comes up on the magnifying glass uh, little icon, you get a clue card, all that sort of stuff. So Who won? Uh, well, th- that's the thing. Like, Not Liv's been playing for a while yep. because she went over to a mate's place a couple of weeks ago and Cluedo was the big thing. So then they've been playing it for the best part of two weeks. You didn't win. So then I'm on the back foot yeah. yesterday. And I thought 
when you toss up, like you go, okay, I think it's uh, the conservatory. I think it, did it did it maybe happen in the conservatory with Reverend Green mm-hmm. with the dagger? Yeah, and then they have to show you one card out of the deck because you get about seven cards each, mm. and they can show you one of the cards if they have one. Yes. Um, and then, and then you, and then, knock, it off and your you knock it off your little list. Yeah. And then they can they obviously ask you. Mm. So I wasn't fully aware of the rules. So Liv kept saying to me, um, I think it's Mrs. Scarlett with the dagger in the conservatory. And the whole time she was leading me down the garden path. In what way? Well, because I thought if you said something, yeah. if you said all those three things, yeah. Scarlet, Conservatory, mm, mm. Dagger, that means that it can't be one of those. It, it can't be yeah, one of Yeah, you that. don't have the, those. The, she doesn't have those. No, no. So, so then I'm marking him off the card. And the little... Yeah, say it, brother. The, uh. the little bish... <laughs> The little bish has led me down the garden path. No, so she's I'm, playing I'm, the game. So well, I didn't realise that. <laughs> she's tricking me. So I'm crossing. Uh, down, I'm crossing off swan, all these swan. bloody names. She's swan. tricking him. I'm cross, and then I'm thinking she keeps asking me. Yeah, because she's after one. She, she keeps asking me for Mrs. Peacock. Yeah, Mrs. Peacock, Mrs. Peacock. The whole time she had Mrs. Peacock. Yeah, oh. because so, she's trying to find out if you have the other ones. Exactly right. Which obviously I found out afterwards, Swanee. My God, you are in trouble moving forward Mate, with this child. I had no idea to the point where I thought, beautiful, I've got her. I got her into the room. I got to Mrs. Peacock in the study ah. with the dagger. Gotcha. <laughs> and she just showed you? She showed Mrs. Peacock. <laughs> this is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Uh, another legend of R&B. Uh, the great Janet Jackson. Oh, yes. Her album, Rhythm Nation, still stands up. Right. Rhythm Nation 1814, I think, was the official. Is that the Nation cover where someone's holding her boobs and she's got her hands up? No, that was later. Rhythm Nation was like, you know, a high cap black. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, yep. right in the heart, right, right in the height of mm-hmm. Janet Jackson mm. ring. And uh, the title track, Rhythm Nation, it's come out that it causes old laptops to crash. What? And it's weird because I haven't thought about Rhythm Nation for ages and it's a great album. Get get back on it if you can. Mm. But I was at a shoot on Monday for Priceline and I was, you know how they play do playlists? Mm. And I was listening uh, to it and I was like, this sounds like Rhythm Nation, but it was Sly and the Family Stone. Okay. And I didn't realise that Rhythm Nation, which sounds like this... Great beat. Great beat. <laughs> it's uh, it's one of the early samples. It samples the Sly and the Family Stone song, which is this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I was like, that's, that's Rhythm Nation. Anyway, that's, that's by the by. It causes old laptops to crash. Raymond Chen. Jenny. Microsoft's. Jenny. Chen Dog Millionaire. Chenny. I'm just oh, Chenny. having a bit of a... Oh, I thought you knew him. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Chen Dog Millionaire. Um, Raymond Chen from Microsoft, he's a principal software engineer, says the song contains one of the natural resonant frequencies for the model 5400 RPM laptop hard drives um, that they, th- those computers and others used, and then when they play that song, they will just... Bleh. Really? Yeah, completely it just freak out. out. Yeah, it wears out. <laughs> this song is like kryptonite to some laptops. Some laptops. So when the robots overtake us to defeat them, yes. all we must do, Janet. It's actually a really good, good idea. Point, Dana. And Thanks, it makes though. sense yeah. with yeah. the nation. I've got an idea. Is I- it all laptops? Uh, so not all laptops. Uh, uh, a particular brand? S- Microsoft. Microsoft. And, just and not the Microsoft. all, but some of some. them. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That would be so weird. You'd be like, why is my why is my uh, yeah. computer just wazzing out? Shut wazzing out <laughs> whenever I get to this track. Waz sounds like a masturbation euphemism, doesn't it? It does. Well, well, it could I be say- if you want. <laughs> You can have that if you want, Dana. If that's your particular style. I say, I, I say, waz when I'm going to the toilet. I'm just going to go and have a waz. Oh, okay, it's a multi tool. Yeah, mm. um, I've got a, I've got a um, hypothesis that I want to test. Mm. Um, I just want to see. I've got another song in my mind that I feel like could shut down this entire radio station. Okay. 
It also operates on a similar frequency. Okay. And uh, we're going to play it and just see if, in fact, it wazzes out. Okay. Okay, let's go. Come sail your ships. (laughs) 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 Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Michelle Williams, a member of Destiny's Child as well as being the microphone on The Masked Singer. And last night, boy, did she blow us away. Unbelievable scenes last night on The Masked Singer. Welcome to the show, Michelle Williams. Hey, hey, hey. it's so good to be talking with y'all. I just, it took me, I love Sydney, so being in Sydney has been absolutely amazing. Now, Michelle. I was just like, I couldn't. Oh, it was amazing. We're so freaking excited to talk to you, but we f- we worry that there's something muffling the damn phone. We can't actually hear you that well. Can you adjust the phone or something? Hello, can you hear me right now? Oh, it's a little bit better. This is driving Sounds me nuts. It's a little bit like you're talking through cotton wool, but we will persist, mm, Michelle. Mm, mm. I was actually okay, on what the... about right now? Yeah, that's, that's better. Better. that's better. I was actually on the judging okay, panel. I'm, I'm the woman far right, and my jaw was on the floor then and still is to have the level of R&B yeah. royalty. Oh, thank you so, so much. It, Sydney, um, Australia has always been good to Destiny's Child, and so I just I couldn't wait to get back. Michelle, uh, can you tell us what it was like growing up as a talented young singer do you, do you have memories of putting on concerts in your lounge room? How did you grow up? How were your family? Were they well off? You know what? Um, no, we weren't well off. Um, you know, but we got food to eat, clothes on our back. We had, you know, nice school and a beautiful, close-knit family who grew up in church. So, you know, I knew it was like to take a brush and have it be my microphone and sing in front of a mirror. <laughs> not knowing that it's something that I do in real life. When did you Being first know that you had a good set of pipes? I mean, that's until I was in, like, junior high school. So that's around the seventh grade. Oh, wow. Michelle, what was... Yeah, seventh grade. Michelle, what was darker? Being inside your costume as the microphone, clearly you would have struggled to say anything, or... After blowing the power up at the 2013 Super Bowl when you performed with Destiny's Child and the power went out. Being in the costume. <laughs> Funny story, the first the first day I tried the costume on, I got claustrophobic. And I am normally not a claustrophobic person. So the awesome wardrobe department at Nassau, Australia, made a few adjustments and I was able to get through. Um, those four episodes. And like I said, I'm not a claustrophobic person, but it was really dark in that costume. I would have had a panic attack and wet myself. This is what Michelle sounded like. Oh my God. That's live. What? Inside a crazy costume. Oh, that note. That note, that one. I mean, we we. We've missed your voice. We've missed you. What's next for Michelle Williams? Thank you so much. You know, I have just been, you know, I've been an advocate for mental health since 2013. I released a book last year called Checking In. So I've really just been focused on getting people to know that, you know, everything's going to be okay. Um, So um, I have my book out, doing more speaking engagements. Um, and when opportunities like my senior come, that's when I get to, you know, do the music thing. Do we try a tight five with Michelle, even though the line's nah, so nah, bad? No, no, Swanee, the line's not great, but Michelle was fantastic. Jack's saying yes, we'll go. Let's reckon? do it, let's do it. Let's All right, it. here we go. Tight five. We'll give you some space around these, Michelle, so we can understand what you're saying. What artists are you loving at the moment? What artist am I loving at the moment? Let's say I'm um, Khaled. And, of course, you know I'm loving Beyonce. So, of course. you know, I can do albums. Of course. What is your go-to fragrance? 
my go-to fragrance, um, anything with amber or sandalwood. Yeah. Yes, me too, Ladybug. Yeah. When was the last time you were starstruck? Oh, my God. My finger, I got to meet one of my child, one of my group idols, Mel B of the Space Girl. Right on. Yeah, that is cool. Your father was a car salesman. What was your first car? My first car was a uh, Yukon Denali. DMC, Yukon Denali. Yukon Denali. And you have been on Broadway. What an achievement. What is your favourite Broadway show? Chicago the Musical. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm. oh that jazz. All right, Michelle. Sorry the line wasn't great, but you were an absolute joy on The Masked Singer, one of the, uh, you know, without question, one of the biggest names, probably the biggest name that's ever done the show. We loved watching you. Thank you for sharing your gift. Thank you so, so much. It's been a joy, and I can't wait to get back to Sydney to actually enjoy more tours. I want to climb the bridge. Yes. Um, the, that's overlooking the harbour. So I'm excited to get back um, when it's a little warmer. You sound, yeah. like, you sound <laughs> like you're swimming in the harbour at the moment. <laughs> One of the great right. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Now, all Australian selection is tonight, and you might go, wow, people are getting picked for a game that they don't play. But it's more than that, John. You're like getting awarded the best in your field. Absolutely. It's a huge honour. That's what the players strive for. That's what. That's all you can achieve because it's indigenous to our country, Swanee. And a cool jacket. Our indigenous sport. And a cool jacket. You get jackets now. Yeah. Never used to back in the day, but the boys get one jacket and then it gets up- updated with the years. So our man, Maxi Gorn, Swanee, going for six All-Australians this year. Jeez. Wow. I'm not sure he's got many challenges. Maybe Sean Darcy for Fremantle. Hasn't been a great year for Ruckman. Mm. So I think our man, Maxi, is going to be very bloody close, Swanee. Fantastic. He's in the squad. He's in the squad of 40, so that'd be great to see. He was Question. captain last Last year. Really? Question. And no one cares about the Eagles, so thanks for indulging yes. me. But yeah. Can someone in a shit team get in the team? And I'm talking about my man, Tom Barass. Absolutely. <laughs> the problem is, yeah. you've got Tom Barass had a great year yeah. in a horrible season for the West Coast Eagles. Yes. You've got a man who had a good year in a shit team. Uh huh. Or you've got a man, Stephen May. Yes. Oh. Who had a good year. In a great team. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, normal. But a scandal. <laughs> what would okay. you do? Sw- uh, and a scandal as well. Well, that's probably. French bu- restaurant steak fruit scandal. Now, that sounds tree bien to me. Punch up over uh, snails, Swanee. Yeah. You know, in the car park. S car, go out of here, you idiot. That's very good. Well, yeah. Do you think he would have got Nicky Rewald's fault? He's an all Australian voter. Would he, would he have given him a mark up for that? Mm. The punch up over snails in the car park of Entrecourt? <laughs> yeah. Or do you reckon he would have marked him down I've for that? I've got a better one. Oh. S car, S car, let's go. That's pretty good as well. Okay. I like the other one. It's colours go. Yeah, not bad. Okay. <laughs> well, Are you Nick Giannopoulos there? Or yeah. There's a lot of other awards in the night too. So you've got the Rising Star. Mm. Um, you've got the Coach Association But just awards. to be clear, it's a, fa- it's a fantasy game. Wouldn't it be great if they just played it yeah. once? Well, it's all a shame, but there's a lot of other awards on the night mm-hmm. as well. They've okay. condensed them into one night, Swanee, mm-hmm. from 7pm tonight on Fox Footy. It'll what be else? fantastic. Nick Dacos is the favourite. Probably a dollar oh one favourite to win the Rising Star. Of course, he's going to win it. So mm. if he does win it, he'll be on our show tomorrow, which See? is fantastic. Great, Dacos. Dacos. You can talk to him about his old man, Swanee. Best and name. the coach, of, coach of the year award. Now I'm reliably informed that Chris Scott was going to be a runaway winner. Uh, yeah. What, what happened? Was signed, sealed, and delivered. What happened? Well, the selection panel heard this ad. Hi, Chris Scott here, coach. Make that business coach. All right, mate. Ooh, All right, stop. Wooden. Wooden well, at best. <laughs> just wooden. Can you go a little bit more, Dana? Hi, Chris Scott here. Hi. Coach. Oh. Make that business coach. Can you lift? And I'm pleased to say that I've recently become chrisscott.au. All right, .au mate. is the new domain name from Web Central. Good reading. As an All-Australian myself... I got nice to no, you. horribly wooden performance. So he has lost the Coach of the Year award. <laughs> Over that Because ad. of that <laughs> Brownie, the podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your midweek uh, Wednesday show. I'm excited because, A, Sam Pang's here. Oh, yes. But also, we've got a huge two hours ahead, haven't we, good, Samuel? W- good morning, Christine. We do have a big, big couple of hours. And uh, Jonathan? Dean? Ah, like, to the real. point where if you have to get out of the car in the next 10 minutes... You're an idiot. Right on your hand, podcast, because you're not going to want to miss... Uh, yeah. What what we've got planned you know, almost, for you? I almost envy those with a two hour drive to work today because Absolutely. there's a mm. there's a lot of gear here. There's a lot of stuff. 
Is it? We're Shaquille. talking Shaquille O'Neal. Was the microphone working? What? Because Shaquille, he speaks very softly for such a big man. Yes. But uh, the microphone would have had to have been dialed up. I've gone back and listened to the audio and it's all there. Don't Beautiful. worry. So, we've, uh, yes. and, uh, so you met Shaquille O'Neal yesterday. That's on a bucket list for so many people. Brandy what was Nutt. it like? It was, it was, it was surreal. He loved Brownie straight away. Of which course. you'll hear off. You'll hear. Really? Oh, yeah, I got yeah, a yeah. butcher's wink early. Yeah. The other, the other thing we forgot. Like, what? Dino requested... And it came in a late text message. Yeah. What? All we had to do was get Shaq saying three words, slam dunk Dino. Yeah. Oh. And, and you didn't do it. No. Oh, I didn't do it. Dogs. dogs. Well, there was a bit going on. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Did you notice a lot of people walking in and out of the room when we were, we were doing the interview? Mate, there was a cast of thousands. I'll tell you what, just I, give us some space no, here. What it's I, hard enough to no, listen no, to the big it, fella. That, mate, that, is, that was absolutely pristine conditions to interview Shaq. The one thing I noticed on the way out, mm. did you see what he's eating? No, he's amazing, holding? wasn't it? What do you mean? I told him this morning, three steaks and a... Three steaks and, three and two chicken, chicken salads. salads. Three chicken salads. What? So three and three. That's my new order. Now, what? I just go well, three and three. for his star, for his entourage, then, but it was actually for him. The next <laughs> two hours, huge name, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, full interview. Jokes aren't funny. Uh, but my thing that I'm most excited about, Shaquille O'Neal's great, but uh, what are you doing tonight is, it's uh, back. is one, of my, one, of the, one of my favourites. And I'm talking book week, guys. Hey, uh. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> this is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy Salmon Brownie on Nova 100. Uh-oh, it's time for a Shaq fact, baby Shaq fact. Did you know he invested in Google before it went public? <laughs> so cool. Shaq fact. I want some tropical stuff. We better do so, give some people a sense of the day today because there's a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, regrets, you've got a few. Time now for us is the day. John Farnham has successfully completed a marathon. Yeah, you got your hand up like like you're in this. In, yes, student. Do you need to go to the toilet? Yes, little Johnny. What's Brown. the difference? You What's the difference again? between tropical stuff yeah. and a sense of the day? Same. Oh, they're the same thing. Oh, same thing. Great. Yeah. One's, one's an explanation. You, one's an explanation, and one is in, in musical form. Mm. John. We just got different intros. Great question. For the same yeah, segment. Whatever, mate. You know what I mean? That I'm going to come up with a different intro for us, Brownie. Farnham has successfully completed a marathon surgery following the shock cancer diagnosis. He was, uh, mate, he was on the slab for about 10, 11 hours. It's amazing, isn't it? I, I don't think. think that, I don't think that's a term that anybody wants to hear at this vulnerable time. I want to say on the slab. On I mean, the slab. On, on the... On getting operated. Opera. He the wasn't opera. dead and then come back from the, the to life. Is, the slab is at the coroner's office. Yeah, at the morgue. Yeah, it's doctor's talk. He's just doing exactly. doctor's talk. No, it's not. He was on the operating table. Yes, from 8 a.m. and completed at 7.30 p.m. Uh, he is now in ICU no. recovering and the and Farnham's family has confirmed the thing. You got your hand up. Do you need to go to the again? He's putting his just, up. We need to get to put a bag on I you or something. I, What's going yes, on? Johnny Brown. I think the work, I think the word you're looking for, he was on the hoist. Uh, he was on the hoist for 10 hours, mate. Okay. He was getting fixed. Okay. He wasn't dead. If you put your hand up one more time, <laughs> I will knock you out. And you go to the principal's office for, for a good two hours. Can't wait to see that. <laughs> so anyway, that's we all, you know, obviously we wish him well and he's in a stable condition. That's good news. Obviously, uh, I'm devastated. I don't like that I don't like that he's even vaguely under the weather. I love him mate, so much. Well, no, he can't go until I've seen him live. He's in it. Once I've seen him live... He's free to... He can head off into the sunset. But until we see him live, Swanee, I don't think I'll be able to live with myself. Can he'll I be, tell you? He'll be back, back up and up and at him as, as soon as he can, I reckon. Yeah, he's, that's a, he's a soldier. <laughs> the tennis fan that Nick Kyrgios accused of having 700 drinks, remember that? Yes. Mm. As a, um, it was a she woman, said, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, she had 700 drinks, you know, can you get her out of here? She's suing him for defamation. Really? Well, she'd only had 650. Speak. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Do something to cover yourself there, Swanee. She's obviously litigious. She is a lawyer herself. Mm. Anna Pallas. Pallus. She was removed from the crowd. Oh, she was removed from the crowd after Kyrgios claimed that she was drunkenly distracting him during that final. She denied the claim has now launched proceedings against Kyrgios to clear her name because now she's known as the 700 drinks woman. She yes. reckons she had one rosé and one pims only. Well, the, by the way, you know, that means... That's if, if, that's, if, yeah. that, if, you're, if you've had one rosé and one pims and you're acting like that, mm. yes, you may not be drunk, but you are an idiot. Exactly. How do you plead? Idiocy. Idiot. Idiocy. <laughs> Brisbane Lions star Cam Rayner will miss next week's elimination final against Richmond after the AFL Tribune 
I don't know how to say it. How do you say it? Tribunal. <laughs> he upheld, they upheld his one much ban. Jonathan, your thoughts as a pundit? Well, it was because of Ben Brown. He ended up with a bloody <laughs> nose. Yep. I think it was on the cricket pitch area, so he's a bit unlucky where he tackled him, but uh, he was always probably going to get the week suspension because of the aftermath. Do we need to talk about how ripped the new GWS coach is? That's Christine, if you absolutely want to. I've got, I've got mm. that there, GWS Giants coach Adam Kingsley. The, the headline is, is absolutely jacked. He looks like a bag of walnuts. Does he? He's muscled up, shredded veins, popping the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. He's got big biceps. Adam Kingsley is the Huge. big, big mound from the west of town. The big mound yeah, from the... Oh, that is fantastic. This is, this is uh, according to ABC, uh, an ABC report. Man, he's ripped. Of course he's ripped. Absolutely. What do you mean, of course he's ripped? It's not all of them. Is no. Any, well, I'll tell you what, there's no excuse not to be ripped, by the way, because the players are only at the club three and a half days a week. Weekdays, there's plenty of time for the coaches to get jacked. Free gym. But not Free like gym, that. it's right there. You just have to walk 15 metres down the corridor Good and just get on. jacked every like day. He looks like Thor. Yeah, he does. You do, it, it just, it like, you know, when you're so big, your bicep, your arms can't go down. You're mm. in that permanent sort of bottle opener position. Yeah, yeah I do that, Ca- but it's my titties. You can't yeah, even shop in bags, Swanee. Yes. Oh, so just, your titties, Dino. Oh, you're a magnificent. You. Oh, thank you. I often see the Swift. Actually, you know what? Every day we see the Swift down in level three in the car park because mm. he's pushing steel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. You know what he's doing? He's jacking steel. One time I saw the Swift that was parked in uh, car, car park number 78. <laughs> I looked at f- four minutes later, it was in car park 81 because old Tits McGay over here had decided to just move it. Isn't that amazing? He gets what Mate, you do. It ran out he of fuel, it. so I moved it. Are you saying that he lifted it? I'm saying he lifted it. He's, he forgot the weights were not enough for him anymore. He moved, on, he moved on to a motor vehicle. What's he doing in? Tits, Tits McGay. McGee. You're <laughs> strong. You're strong, Titties. Oh, thank you. Can we just, I'll just finish with the, <laughs> just a. Um, it's a good appointment, by the way. I just yeah. finished with this. That, yeah, uh, yeah, congratulations and hats off to a baseball fan in the state, Swanee, mm. a Yankees fan who's turned his hot dog mm. into a beer straw. Yeah, I saw this. Yeah, of course he did. Great effort. Uh, he, uh, he licked both ends of the of the of the hot dog. The fan then leaned over. He pricked, picked up his drink from the ground, the beer. He placed the hot dog in it. And with the hot dog almost fully submerged, he took a sip of the drink. So the man, the genius, is using the hot dog. The dog, mm. not the bun, just the That's dog, right. has a straw. Oh my lord! Mm. Yes. Mate. How did he get the hole in it, Sam? He just, he just he, put, he the straw push the straw put the straw all the way through. All the way through. Mate, Heston Blumenthal is kicking. His ass <laughs> <laughs> Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Let's go. Win a brand new Mitsubishi Mirage just by hearing one noise. Sam Payne's Jokes Are Funny. Here we are, Melbourne, your chance to toot toot drive away in a Mitsubishi Mirage. I reckon today's the day. I'm staying hopeful. Kale from Hyatt. Is it Kale? Yeah, Gail. Okay. Come on, let's do this. Uh, I was going to go out on a date with the girl to the gym the other week. Uh, and I got there and she never showed up. So I guess it's not going to, uh, I guess we're not going to work out. Oh, get a punters! You're really, quick on that. W- really well told. You're quick on that, yeah, Dino. My instinct said no one was going to have a little chuckle yeah. of that one. I enjoyed that one. Oh, oh. you faced it. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> we got any more, Kyle? Uh, that was just one that just came to mind. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm that... literally just driving to the coast. So. Do you want to uh, Kyle, do a roll no. the dice with another one? Well, they Kyle. Do they haven't? Uh, nah. they haven't uh... I like it, John. Do you want to go again? Just do you want to have another go, Kyle? Lucky dip. <laughs> uh. I haven't got any off the top of my mind. No worries, Kyle. Mate, you're, right, a, Kyle. you're a good young... How old are you, Kyle? Uh, 32. You're off to oh, the Puffing up. Billy Railway, brother. A family pass. <laughs> this is unusual for a 32-year-old man. So you're going to Puffing Billy? Do you have children, One of the great Kyle? days. <laughs> Daniel. Good morning, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. Good morning. Morning, guys. How are you going? Good, good Daniel. Good, mate. Uh, have you guys heard about the bloke that dipped his testicles in glitter? I have not heard about the bloke <laughs> you're in, that... You're in, look at you guys, you're already in, aren't you? <laughs> dipped his testicles yeah. in glitter. You tell us, Daniel. Uh, it's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. Oh, that's... Magnificent. So Magnificent effort, brother. And you... Uh, what are those words? <laughs> Can you... What are those words again? Together? Combined? 
Testicles. <laughs> oh, God. Something oh. about glitter and testicles. What do you, no, what do you want? This is on the joke again. Go the joke again. Go the question. Okay. Uh, did you hear about the guy who dipped his testicles in glitter? No. Is that what you, are you writing? Dipped his testicles in glitter. Mm -hmm. Never heard those words together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you. Have you lost your mind to that? Are you all right? No, I haven't. Daniel, <laughs> you got to... Just like you've lost your mind many a time. I have. What better prize for Daniel than a 12-pack of Daniel's Donuts? No, send him on the Puffin' Billy You're with Kale. You're off to Puffing Billy as well, mate. Hold on. Him and, him and Kale can sit on the same carriage. <laughs> Going... Chick -a -chick -a -chick -a -chick -a -chick Sarah from Belgrave, speaking of Puffing Billy. Hello. Hi. How many times have you been on Puffing Billy, Sarah? Uh, I reckon about five, maybe. Mm. What? Have, yeah. we, have we got a prize for you? <laughs> Sarah, I haven't been on for a while, so okay. it would be good. <laughs> what, uh, what is your joke? Okay, so there's two hunters walking through the woods when all of a sudden the first hunter clutches at his chest and drops to the ground. Um, the other hunter calls triple zero and says, help, help, I think my mate's in trouble, I think he's dead, what do I do? So the triple zero operator says, right, the first thing we need to do is work out if he's really dead, or make sure he's really dead. So the line goes silent for a bit, and you hear this massive bang. And the hunter comes back on and says, right, now what do I do? Puffing Billy, you're going. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is out of Belgrave. Sarah's from out that way, so not far, around the corner. This, 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 this segment may be finished, seriously. <laughs> Sarah may have just finished it. Just the, the silence, <laughs> the shocked silence of their dick. Puffing Billy. Oh, golly. Jaunty number, huh? Jaunty, <laughs> Jaunty indeed. number. Joe. Joe. Uh, Sarah was nice. I liked Sarah. She was so, I don't understand that joke, but yeah, Sarah was good. Joe from Wang. <laughs> I'm back. Good on you, mate. <laughs> I love it. This, that was just my warm-up. This is the good one. Okay, great. Okay, let's all <laughs> cleanse the our warm -up? chakras. Yeah. Okay. Joe was on last week. Or the week oh, before. yeah, sorry. I, I, I remember him all. <laughs> Okay, so a woman with tiny boobs buys an old mirror from an antique shop. She hangs it on her bathroom door. The next morning she playfully says, Mirror, mirror on the door, make my boobs size 44. There's a flash of light and boom, her boobs grow to a massive size. She screamed and ran to show her husband. They both hurried back to the bathroom and the husband stands in front of the mirror with his fingers crossed and he says, Mirror, mirror on the door, make my penis touch the floor. There's a flash of light and boom, both of his legs fall off. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Joe, we all loved it. What the, the, the one man what with the... What you do is like, you stop coming in on a Wednesday. Mate. I'm like, That's where yeah. I'm at. The it's one man with the keys in his pocket <laughs> didn't laugh. Yeah. Joe, you keep did trying. Did, well did you think that laugh was from Penny Joe? Oh, I thought sorry, I thought I had that, that then. Mm. <laughs> would you like six bottles of wine, or would you to, like to drink some, on the puff and Billy? <laughs> or would you like uh, some Daniel's wine, donuts? Just the wine. You're off to puffing <laughs> Billy rail thingy. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie on Nova 100. Shaquille O'Neal's coming up. Oh, all oh, time for another Shaq fact, baby Shaq fact. Did you know <laughs> that Shaq released a rap song? <laughs> This is Straight Playing by the great Shaquille O'Neal. She's we had a great chat and a great time. Mm. Uh, it's coming up. I almost wish I had some of these facts yesterday before the chat, Brownie. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, you know one of his nicknames? Because he's got a lot of nicknames. What about 30? Yeah, one of his nicknames, the big fella. <laughs> <laughs> what does 30 mean? No, no, no. no, he no, no. He's, got a, he's got a lot of nicknames. Oh, I hope um, one of them is the great Australian tradition of tiny, smiles. Yeah, uh, no. No? No, oh. he, he's the other way. The big Aristotle, yes. Superman, Diesel, MDE, Trouser Cannon. <laughs> yes. He's got them all. He's all there. Mm. Uh, Staying in America, though, Jonathan. Diesel uh, in America. Well, one of the biggest sporting events on Sunday, well, this country's seen for quite a while in terms of home and away events, was Carlton Collingwood. It was unbelievable. 88,000 to a normal game. Our little country, Swanee, mm. batting, well above our, bat, batting well above our... Um, what our capabilities or certainly our population size, but the Yanks were onto it. They're loving it. So we're following on Jason Quist on Twitter, who had no idea. So he threw this out, and Twitter absolutely lit up Great. with all the different threads. He said, "Hey, at AFL, don't take this the wrong way, but Aussie rules football is one of the most incomprehensible games I've ever seen in my life." 
and I'm determined to figure it out in this Twitter thread. Wait, so John, just to be clear, he's live tweeting a game. Live just tweeting the game, the start of the Carlton Collingwood game, wants to understand it. And I just want you he? to know I'm doing my best, but no spoilers. Where is he? He's in the States. Right. He's in America. Um, so first, qu- first tweet goes out. First things first, this sport has the absolute best kickoff equivalent where the ref just hammers the ball into the centre spot. Yeah. I want to learn enough about this sport just to do this. <laughs> he wants to be an umpire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's watching Imagine the game. Imagine how they're yeah. learning. Mate, even the, even the umpires here in our game don't want to do the centre bounce. <laughs> it would be amazing being a, if you've just come to the country and you've never seen our sport before. It is hard to understand, isn't it? Because it <laughs> seems like a game with no rules. I'll be honest, I still find it. I watch a fair bit yeah. now, uh, but I still often don't know what's going on. Mm. And I just back. need to breathe through it you know, and he's, enjoy it. Is anyway. he from, he's from America? Yeah. You know, it's not, yeah, if you think about it, though, it's not that far from the start of a basketball game. In, in basketball, two, two, um, two people, go, two athletes go up and the, the ref throws the ball yes. up in the air. The, the, the basketball would be great if it started with the, with the ref the bouncing bounce. the ball <laughs> up into the air yeah, and had the weight. Shaq could be dominant start. there. It's uh, one of the best starts, I think, in, mm. in any sport. Also, there isn't a lot of legal contact except for these rare instances. Still haven't gotten to the bottom of this. Where someone is allowed to absolutely paste some poor son of a bitch. <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> oh, want a great line. <laughs> Next, sorry, back. Sorry, back to how I would be bad at this. How do you defend this sport? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> so he's got no idea at this stage, Jason. What does that mean? Well, like, he is he talking about defending in a sports term or defending well, as in... Well, no, a sports d- term. Yeah, sports term. Right. Uh, next one. Going back to scoring. So you kick these scrummed up jump balls and then sometimes they just pop out. Then if, if an offensive player gets a good line on a ball, they turn into prime Bruce Lee. <laughs> what, is- like, get off me? Yeah. Or, or, or they kick... What did, I don't know that... He's making it more compliment, like is, complicated. By the time he's finished, I won't understand the game. I've got this guy. I've got this guy shit faced on his couch, just yeah, shooting Caught. off tweets. Caught. Absolutely. Okay, it seems like they call the end of the field the sweet spot, but then they have to bend it like Beckham to get it in a relatively narrow goal. Yes, that's true. <laughs> oh, he's starting it. to get onto something now. Yeah. Um, so he's getting towards the end. Oh my God, what a tremendous finish! And then he comes up with his final summation of what the game is all about. Hey, John. Uh, um, <laughs> there which which there, sound? There it is. Which one? Well, no. just, just the normal tweet sound, brother. Oh, sorry. Which you've been oh, playing yeah. for the whole oh, break. Oh, I thought he wanted whole, a grab. Oh, I was, just, talk break. I was confused, confused as well. I was Thank confused you. as Thank well. You. It looked like yeah, it a did. grab. Yeah. It looked like you wanted a grab. I will say. <laughs> admit it. I know a lot of... No. No, I won't admit it because we didn't tell you anything up before the break. Sam's so got a question. Go, Sam. Admit it. Admit it that it sounded like you just needed it. You didn't. You know. You needed something other than a tweet sound. Well, I would admit it if we'd actually talked about this before we did the talk break. I will say. There you go. Well done, Dino. <laughs> <laughs> Dino. Yeah, 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 here we go. <laughs> I will say. Mm. I know a lot of meatheads see sports for the first time and go, "I would be the LeBron of this," yeah. but I would not. These guys are angry all the time, probably because they're running a marathon during a fist fight. Yes! Oh, what a great analogy. Don't that is great. Come it's on. Up. Jason Quist. That's Jason game Quist. Of AFL. You got it. Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. And Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. What if it? It's Aussie for travel. It's the best. Oh, all time for another Shaq. 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 These are your facts, by the way. At 10 years old, Shaq was six foot four. Yeah. yeah that, what? That does not surprise me in the slightest, nor, nor would it uh, surprise Brownie, considering yesterday we had the great privilege to go into uh, Crown, Crown. Town, Crown and interview Shaquille O'Neal. Right, it was amazing. What a Wonderful great day stuff. I've been following you. basketball a lot, a lot of years. I know you have. And so um, to actually be there with, with my friend Brownie, interviewing Shaq, a big, big thrill. Um yeah, the last time we've actually, you know, obviously in the COVID times and we've had, it's been on Zoom or people have started mm. coming in all that, but the, the, we've, we feel like the last time we went out, the, well, the, remember the two times that we went out to actually interview someone was the, one of our very first uh, times uh, on the show when we went to a hotel and interviewed uh, Samuel L. Jackson and Kurt Russell. We mm-hmm. went to them mm-hmm. and you're on their turf, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's not like coming into our show. The other one we 
the big one was we went into the South Melbourne market and interviewed uh, Eddie, the king of the dim sims. You know, what I mean? so we all, we only go, we only leave for the big ones. Brown. Top level, yeah. I would have thought the the top tier those three big names: Shaq, mm. Eddie. Samuel L. Jackson, mm. and Eddie from yeah, South, South Melbourne dim sims. So, Swanee, we go in there, right? And it's uh, so we're going to play. We're going to play uh, more of it after eight thirty. Mm-hmm. So we had a good chat with him. I thought we were going to get five minutes. We ended up getting twelve. Well, Brady had to fight for it a bit beyond the scenes. Well, we did were t- you, bro? While, while we're talking, well done, man, young saying, man. At the six minute mark, I said to Brody, uh, "They're going to wrap it up soon. They're going to wrap it up." And Brody just kept pushing him back. Did kept, you, kept bro? Oh, bro. Oh. See, by what the way, way to close what a, thirteen minutes. What a producer! He, uh, we were unaware of this. We were, under, we're unaware of the shenanigans going going on behind I knew the there scenes. There was a bit of movement going on because. You could see you were you were blocked by that light stand, but exactly. there was a bit of movement coming in and out of the room. But uh, Bro is one of the great shepherds. Right. Whoa, brave! Did not think he had it in him. No, nah. thought he's just some little cook unit who asks a stupid football question every Monday. He's got more gears than that, Swanee. Yeah, he is that, but he is also something else. Mm. Yes, a degenerate. Mm. <laughs> but the thing is, I, there were many, many questions, and we covered a range of topics, in which, like I said, we'll play after eight thirty. But one of them, though, of course, I wanted. To, I was. I'm sitting next to a Hall of Famer, and you know, Brownie's quite. Uh, you know, he he's got a presence An himself. Energy. Absolutely. They always look. They don't look at me. They think, well, "Why are you here?" But mm. with Brownie, they go, "I wonder what his story is." So I, uh, I just alerted Shaq to the point that he w- he may have been in the presence of footy greatness and got his thoughts on um, on Aussie rules. Uh, and there's a couple of little bits that I quite enjoyed. Shaq, I don't know if you know this, but I'm Brownie, apart from being a very good-looking man. He's a Hall of Fame in Aussie rules. Do you know much about Aussie rules? I know that those guys are tough. Really tough. Thank you, Shaq. And, and in order to play, from, from, from what I've seen, in order to play that game, we can't be soft. See, I, I look at I look at all sports. I'm a fan of all sports. But being a tough guy myself, I know who's tough and I know who's not. Like the way those, the, the, most of the guys that are running are physical specimens and the way they hit, the way they fight. That So I don't know much about the game or how it's played, but like, you know, from the clips I've seen where you run and you tackle people. So if he's a Hall of Famer, he's a tough sun gun. If he's a Hall of oh. Famer, he's a tough son guy. Oh. But oh. sorry, man. Thank really. you, Shaq. He's the funniest. From the top. From the top. So funny. Shaq, I don't know if you know this, but I'm Brownie apart from being a very good looking man. He's a Hall of Fame in Aussie rules. Do you know much about Aussie rules? I know that those guys are tough. Really tough. Thank you, Shaq. <laughs> Freddie's voice went Freddie's voice went lower and deeper than Shaq's all of a sudden. Turned into Barry White. Thank you, Shaq. I love those things when you, you have your own microphone. Where you just, oh, yeah. You just, just a little you sneaky know, ones. Just a little what about sneaky. Thank you, Shaq. The last bit, the last bit. You may not have even heard that, Shaq. The last bit, though, that when he describes you as a tough sun gun. If you put tough sun gun and then into thank you, Shaq, can Here we you go. do that, Dennis? Here we go. If he's a Hall of Famer, he's a tough sun gun. Thank you, Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the full more, oh more God. Shaq. So ridiculous. Come on, thank Thanks. you, Shaq. Good morning. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. It's uh, it's certainly a day of firsts. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal is coming up on the show. It's the first time we've ever had him on the show. And also, Ash Gardner just said, you're listening to Nova, it's 8 o'clock. Wow. <laughs> I believe that that is the first time we've ever... Heard that from her on time wow. the news at exactly 8 a.m. How do you time, feel? I know, I feel amazing. It's the first time it's ever come out of my mouth. I feel like I can quit now and just go into retirement. What Please, a lost, beautiful. What a loss to the industry that would be. <laughs> It is book week as well, which we'll be talking about, but we're burying the lead. Coming up next, what are you doing tonight? One of my favourite oh, segments. What? Oh, the return. The return. Five secret celebrities and their plans for this evening. Yeah. yeah. Shack on. What? Thank you, Thank Shaq. You, Shaq. <laughs> Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. What we're about to do next, by the way, I was reminded, it came uh, basically um, after a show we'd done a few years ago, Swanee. Mm. Where, uh, I'm, I won't name the uh, person from Upper Level Management, mm. pointed out that we'd done an interview that was, it was quite good, I remember them saying, but, uh, you know, I don't think you needed that question about what are they doing tonight. That's crap. <laughs> And so my response to that, of course, was to double down and do this segment. 
What are you doing tonight? What are you doing tonight? It's a great question. Great question, brother. Gut feel, favourite segment. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So let's let's kick things off. So I've uh, me and the team have got together a wonderful array of people. I'm gonna. You don't know who they are, but we're gonna find out what they're doing tonight. But you'll know them after when when I you know when I get to them. I'm really keen to get to them. But should we? Do a quick round ourselves to establish how this segment works. Chrissy, Lightning round. Chrissy Swan, what are you doing tonight? I'm going to make chicken schnitzel wraps. Bang. Dino, what are you doing tonight? I'm going to be lonely. What are you doing? Brandy, you're, you're not allowed to say what Dino said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be the same thing. I'll be at the All-Australian Awards. Ha. Okay, great. Whoa. Sam, what are you doing tonight? I'll be crying myself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get going, because they're all there ready to go. So uh, where are we starting? Oh, here we go. Whoa. Uh, this man first came to our attention on a little show called Backyard Blitz in 2002. A salt of the earth man who's appeared on shows such as Burt's Family Feud, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and Hole in the Wall. Don't don't Google that on a work computer. Now, you know him as the host of The Block and Gold Logie winner Scott Cam. Good morning, Whoa. Scotty. And what are you doing tonight? Morning, gang. Uh, it's my eldest son's 26th birthday. We're going out for dinner as a whole family. It's going to be unreal. That that is interesting. A, that's great plan there, Scotty. 26th birthday. 26. Not a massive one, but still enough to have a what couple of beers. You got him, got him a present, Scotty? Uh, yeah. You know what? We got him two tickets to Elton John. Oh, that's a great present. Hey, Scotty, you going to take them taxidermy dogs to the pub? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scotty Cam, thank you so much. Hey, what a start, Whoa, eh? That bro, is out great. of the box. <laughs> out, of the, out of the block. God. Oh, what? Good. And also, it's eight a block now. Yes, it, it is. is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what about this one? A man who played uh, 364 games for the Western Bulldogs, made six All-Australian teams, universally regarded as one of the nicest human beings going around with a grin that lights up the screen on Fox footy. I'm talking about the smiling assassin, Brad Johnson. Oh, Brad, 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 good morning, and what are you doing tonight? Uh, good morning. I'm smiling now, Sam. That's for sure. Thanks very much for the intro. But tonight, <laughs> it's, it's bin night, so I'm putting the bins out. That's the first thing I'm doing, and then after that, I'm going to watch the great man on the All Australian Awards. I'm not there tonight, so I'll just sit back and and watch the great man go to work. Thank you, thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. I'm Big. putting the bins out, <laughs> Big. and then I'm watching the All Australian. Oh, what a combination! Oh, mate, yeah. it's uh, important, don't forget. Uh, just a remind: how many All Australians did you did you uh, make, Brad? Uh, I made six, Sam. Yeah. Oh. Brandy, how many, how many did you do, Brad? Only a couple. Oh. Not in the same territory. <laughs> thank you, Jack. No, it's he, the smiling assassin. Does he just he just makes Ooh. you happy, doesn't he? So oh, he's one of mine, Brad. While we've got you, there's not too many people called Brad. But we've got one of our favourite callers. Brad uh, uses his name as his buzzer, and he says it very quickly like this: "Brad, mm. could you give us could you give us one of those?" Brad. Yes. Oh, no, <laughs> that's good. A bit slow, I thought. A little bit slow, brother. Go again. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Brad. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's excellent. Yeah, no, no, thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. He really is a wonderful man, but for the sake of balance, it's worth noting that he may have links to organised crime. All right. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Brad. Who we got next? <laughs> oh, right, yeah, this one here. Uh, well, she was with SBS for a, a long, long time before, uh, well, cutting and running for the bright lights of uh, the sweet money at Channel 9. A rising star of the Channel 9 stable, Christine. Mm. You may have seen her on 60 Minutes and on the Today Show, able to effortlessly shift gears between hard-hitting news and light entertainment. Yeah. Many people are calling her a modern-day Denise Drystar. What? <laughs> Um, a television presenter and journalist, Sarah Arbo. Big. Good morning, Sarah, and what are you doing tonight? Wow, Denise Drysdale, I'm not doing that tonight, but I am supposed to be having dinner with the boys from KISS. <gasps> Jesus. All right, then. Jeez, Better uh, than putting the bins out like a Johnson. <laughs> Downplayed that a Whoa. bit, Arvo. Leave the other callers. I, I say supposed to be because I, I was supposed to have dinner with them on Monday and they ditched me. The old rockers ditched me. They, they reckon they've still got a goddamn do they, do. Do they have? Do, if you have dinner with Kiss, do, do you have it at 4.30? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Actually, just... it could be because they don't have a concert. It, yes, <laughs> yes, it could be. Is, um, is the reason that they won't commit is because you haven't signed something that says you won't press charges? <laughs> hey, Arbo, hey, can I? Can you give us Charles Woolley's number? <laughs> we've been through this, Dino. I've called him on your behalf before. Yeah. Sarah, while we've got you Charles too, Woolley. of course, um, 
Uh, can we expect a, a, a story from you on a channel uh, on uh, 60 Minutes this Sunday? I've, I've noticed you do a, you do a story every like every couple of months. Is, it, is there one on this Sunday or, or do we have to wait till October and November? Oh, Sam, there are some among us who work five days a week as opposed oh. to four. However... Oh! Yeah. Like come back. Cop that. <laughs> so is there... Yes, you can expect a big story from me this Sunday. Oh. And as, as, once more, I cannot reveal too much, but I can tell you that it is worth tuning in for because it's a big deal. Cocaine Cassie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your new nickname on this show. So <laughs> thank you, Sarah. <laughs> All the best. Uh, who, are we, who are we not next? Uh, no, whoa. One, no one's going to come on this segment because we completely undermine their authority. Mm. I'm just and saying Brad Johnson has, has links to organised crime. <laughs> <laughs> Brad. <laughs> this next one, a talented singer, television presenter and radio broadcaster whose voice you've been hearing a lot on Nova Drive lately, hopefully more in the future. <gasps> Ricky Lee. Ricky, good Whoa. morning. And what are you good doing morning. tonight? Well, tonight when I get home from doing Drive with Tim and Joel on Nova, I'm going to be walking in the front door, getting nude as, human, as quickly as humanly possible, popping on my big fluffy robe and then jumping on the couch for a nice long scroll on the gram. Yes, Ricky Lee. She's stealing the moves. I'll have to make sure I put something up on the gram tonight then. I've yeah. been meaning <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Lee, I've been meaning to uh, text you and say that I've come around. We had a very heated debate about which was the best apple. Oh, yeah. And, we did, uh, and yeah. I think we actually had that chat yesterday or the day before with, with Tim and Joel. Because you're Can's Eye or Jazz, aren't you? Yep, absolutely. Mm. Granny Smith is not a thing. Red Delicious, powdery and weird. Fuji apples, absolutely not. This is it's, it's, it's very important. Agreed. This topic. I've come I've come around to your way of thinking. All the best. Thank Walter. you for thank you for finishing with it. Stunningly irrelevant um, <laughs> uh, chat. Uh, no, uh, Ricky Lee on uh, Drive. Love she's Ricky Lee. Yeah, we, she's okay, you have, this is going to be a big finish. Whoa. These are some big names. Whoa. Big Whoa. names. Come on now. Stand up comedian of the highest order. But it's his TV work I admire most from his recurring role as Troy Van, Troy Van Winkle in the ABC comedy series Upper Middle Bergen. A beautiful and funny man who, wherever he is performing tonight, I'm guessing there are tickets still available. <laughs> One of our favourites, friend of the show, Dave Thornton. Oh. Good morning, David, and what are you doing tonight? Nothing like finishing this segment out with a fizzle, guys. I... Um... <laughs> Guys, uh, after the shock omission from the All-Australian team, I thought, what am I going to do tonight? And uh, I'm actually performing a friend of the show's Chuckle Hut, the Dave O'Neill's Funhouse oh. in Fairfield yes. at the Grandview Hotel. Yes. Big. That, that, just in case. I drop by on the way home from the All-Australian. What so time are you getting on stage? Uh, Brownie, I'll be on stage, I reckon, about half nine, I reckon. Oh, Sweet spot. Hey, that, uh, that gig starts at about 8, 8.30, and hopefully you're going. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to see this uh, this city's greatest stand up just popping into a little a little pub in Fairfield called The Grandview, mm. hosted by Dave yeah. O'Neill. What else do you want? Hey, uh, that's exactly right. Shane Bourne, what are you doing tonight? Well, that's interesting, because I'll be scouring the city to see if there's any homicide. You <laughs> <laughs> like a really like a performing seal, isn't whatever they, whatever Dino wants you to do, you'll do. <laughs> Astonishing. Hey, Dono, I love you so much. It's uh, always thank you, so Dave. good to hear you. It's voice. back. Want a great segment, well, right Samuel. Absolutely brilliant. Chrissy Sam and Brownie. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Facts coming up. Got it forever, Swanee. Got that forever. Thank you, Shaq. Can't just have it again. It's so earnest. Here we go. Thank you, Shaq. <laughs> and listen to the breath going into it. Thank you, Shaq. Yes. I didn't want to derail the whole his answer, but I just managed to but get it. But it was a compliment <laughs> about you and your game. So, Jonathan, you made me laugh. Do? Uh, one of the things that, I mean, I don't like too much about, like, you know, parenting. <laughs> but I love a dress-up. I love it. I'm, I'm one of these mothers that really gets into it. And um, buy into it, meaning, you know, I, I go online and buy a cool costume. <laughs> and it's book week this week, which is something I can get behind because I'm a reader. And uh, I've got a couple of recommendations for you. Are you all across book week? Do you know yeah. what it would? Is it so, a certain day, though? Well, at my kids' school, it's today, but I think there's sort of celebrations throughout mm. the week. It's a like, festival. It's a festival. <laughs> it's like myth or something. That's why I hit you up the other day. I texted you about Warwick Todd books, 
um, I asked Sam, I said, oh, can yeah. you give me a Warwick Todd book? Because my uncle rang me on Sunday and said, one of the kids wants to go as Warwick Todd. Oh, of who's course, Warwick to- Todd? Tommy Gleisner's fictional cricket character. Oh, of course. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so, you so, know, because uh, I thought, geez, Warwick Todd, that is an old reference for a kid. T- Tommy, just to not derail completely, Tommy Tommy doesn't have any. Like, he's, yeah. the, he's the opposite of you. Like, he wrote a book <laughs> and you have thousands of copies. <laughs> he has no he has no copies of Warwick Todd. Yeah, he's sold out. I'm still I'm <laughs> sell mine. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Well, my uh, middle son, Kit, is going as a banana from Piranhas Don't Eat Bananas by Aaron Blaby. This is this doubles as this is a book that you can read to your kids that won't make you want to end mm. at all. Blaby, Blaby, the author of The Good Guys. Yes. Correct. Yes. He's one of the greats, Aaron Blaby. Isn't the bad guys? Yes. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, good guys, that's of course, it. I think are a what? Uh, what? An, good, uh, uh, electrical retailer. <laughs> Best price, guaranteed. Best exactly. price, don't you worry. It's a good kids book. Um, so he's going as that and Peg is going as a crayon from the book the the day the crayons quit or the day the crayons came home there's a few of them by Oliver Jeffers do you know that Sam that I don't book? know that one but that sounds like a that's a fun that's a fun uh, costume Get you will crayon. love that you will love what that color? and the the crayon is chef's kiss like she's been wearing it it's so good good question John. it's a bright red crayon with all the crayola branding. Oh, it is a great that. costume and it's warm and it's cosy and she went out on the weekend and bought a matching red hoodie so she doesn't get cold uh, under it. What happens to him at the pumped. end? Of the morning, I might, might grab it like, you know, just to spice things up a bit. You know? <laughs> I'll bring it in. I'll bring it in tomorrow but please give it back to me dry cleaned. It's for children. <laughs> Alright, that took a bit of a turn now. <laughs> okay, let's get back on the book week, Sonny. Slight curveball. Mm? So this is an exciting day. Peg loves the mm. costume. She's excited to go to school. She wants her friends to see. When you've got something really great to wear, she's not well. Damn it. She's been unwell yesterday and has woken up today unwell. Is she faking it? No, she's definitely not faking it. She's got some sort of stomach bug thing. She went to the doctors yesterday. There's medication and stuff involved. There was a huge anxiety last night and uh, she's like, the timing couldn't be worse because I've got this amazing costume and I want my friends to see me in it. But I'm really not well. I'm really not well. And I said, well, you have taken a course of antibiotics and that's sort of, you know how you do a miraculous turnaround mm. sometimes? You're like, oh, my God, I feel a couple of days in- in. incredible. Even the next morning I was saying to her, you might wake up tomorrow and you feel great. Turns out she hasn't. But she's just struck me and she struck a deal with me. Oh, yes? She's like, okay, how does this sound? <laughs> I'm going to go to school. In my uniform, I'm going to get, I'm going to get the accolades yeah. for, the, for the great Crayola costume. Yep. And then at nine thirty after work, just swing by and pick me up. <laughs> I mean, I can't argue with it. Really genius. I can't argue yeah, with kid. it. Yeah, get she's, the glory she's not. Off into she's, the sunset. she's not contagious. She just doesn't feel well. Yeah. She's worked out a plan that means that <laughs> she gets it all. Peg, I like can't the, let it dance one. I like, I like, not not ten a.m. or recess. No, nine, a not, hard nine thirty. <laughs> nine thirty. She knows that that's when I'm available. I could be available at nine thirty. You can do it. Yes, I am. Do yep. not Good move. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Chrissy, yeah. Sam and Brownie. Picture Talking. this. Jonathan, Sam and Shaquille O'Neal in one hotel room. It was a big room too. The garden room. Normally, Sonny, we've done it before and we've been in tight little rooms. Mm. But it felt like it was a room here. It was good. Yeah, but it was, the big man walked in. It was an event when he walked in. It was. It was yeah. funny. I'm hoping that everyone knows who Shaquille O'Neal is. Oh, and he was like, surely. he's an NBA basketball Hall of Fame. He's a four-time... I think he's uh, top NBA ten champion. most famous people in the world. I reckon so too. His basketball's global. It's yeah. Shaq. It's Shaq, and obviously I am a big basketball fan. But we didn't go. I didn't go basketball nerdy. I thought about the listeners and what they would be interested mm-hmm. in. But like Brandy said, it was a big room at, at Crown Towers, and mm. the big man walked in. This first bit's a bit off mic as he walks in and and um, and says hello to us. But it, he, he, he <laughs> makes it. Here we go. He makes it uh, very clear and, and sets the scene very early. Your brother. No. <laughs> good, good, good. Yes, that's Brownie. Good, Shane. Good, Shane. I'm Sam. Nice to meet you. I'm Sam Ayers. Yes. Wow. No. I don't know who I'm talking to, Sam and Brownie. <laughs> he so said he your was, name. He was, uh, he was offered an info sheet. You know, Manuel, do you want this? He goes, no, I know who I'm talking to, Sam Brownie. Did he duck Impressive. to get under the door? Honestly. 
No, a big no, door is there, no, This was a yeah. big room. It's like a function room. room. Gotcha. So anyway, that was just a little bit of off mic. You set the scene. You wanted info sheet? No, no, I'm, I'm all good. These two will be fine. Straight away you get the feeling that clearly he beats to his own drum. You know, I don't need the info sheet. No, I'll do, do whatever I want. I'll do whatever I want. So, Swanee, we, 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 we get underway, and how do I put this? He, he immediately took a shine to your friend, Jonathan. Shaquille O'Neal, thank you so much for joining us on Nova 100. I'd rather not talk to you. I'd rather talk to him. He's more, he's better looking than you are. Hello, thank, Brownie. How thank are you very much, Shaq. I tell you what, I, I don't know. Where, I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit nervous, oh. so I don't know where to start. I can't look at Sam. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yes! He actually, he actually put a pillow up to shield his eyes from me. You know, a little bit it's of... Fun. It's fun early, Swanee. Oh, <gasps> straight away a laugh. Did That's you all done well because he's come off the plane. Oh. You know, you're thinking, geez, what sort of mood's the big fella in? But uh, yeah, I'll, you, I'll you get off the plane after 20 hours. Yeah. Publicity is not what I'm thinking for, no. for my first well, day. Especially no. the size of him. You know, there's not many... I don't think there's an airline seat out there. That would really accommodate him yeah, and make that's a good true. flight. Jonathan, when you say to little kids, get a champ, how you go and and they get a lift, do you reckon you got that feeling from Shaq saying it to you? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely I did. Uh we asked that we were nervous to meet Swanee. We were mm. nervous to meet this man, so we uh, we addressed that. The last time we were here interviewing someone was Samuel L. Jackson five years ago. And Kurt Russell. And we were nervous that day. Shaquille, when was the last time you were nervous to meet somebody? In the elevator in the Four Seasons of Beverly Hills Hotel. I've always had a severe crush on Halle Berry. So, so I'm standing at the elevator, and the door opens, and it's just her. And I get on, and I can't say nothing because I stutter. So I know she's going to the eighth floor. So in my mind, because I watch her hit eight, so in my mind, I got eight floors to try to close the deal. <laughs> so it's just me and her in the elevator, and, and I'm like this, I'm like. And I could just hit go ding, 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 and I'm like. And then by the time it gets to eight, she walks out, I was like, hello. She said, all right, nice to meet you. I was like. So that was like, that was in that, like, 98. We attempted to just hit all the buttons, so they had to stop. I, I, I should have, but she was she's she, she was perfect. Not at all. Sixteen floors. Yep. Wow. <laughs> wow. Halle even Barry. even even mm. the greats get nervous, yeah. Christine. Yeah. And that would have been just as he was rising to superstar in '98. Oh. Um. Uh, Jeez, imagine the size difference between him and <laughs> Halle Berry. Jeez. Well, they're like me and him, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, the size got difference enough. between him and anyone. Yeah. And she anyone. Went out and pat him on the head. So one of the other, he uh, his post-playing career, he's gone into the media, Swanee, and he has a, he's, uh, he's part of wonderful coverage on TNT when it's himself, Charles Barkley, Kenny Smith and, and Ernie Johnson. It is wonderful. It wins Emmys, just this coverage of the game. It doesn't even matter what game it is, you yeah. watch these guys. And um, so uh, Charles Barkley, he works with Charles Barkley and Brownie had a question about Sir Charles. Chuck, what's he like, uh, the big man, Sir Charles? He's really a nice guy, sort of like me. Charles' mom and my mom were best friends for 30 years. Ah. I didn't. I had no idea until we had that fight. He's uh, he's kind. He's courteous. He loves helping people. He's, he'll give you the shirt off his back, and he, he's always going to speak his mind. Like he he 100 percent speaks his mind. I'm a lot more corporate, so I'm probably 70 percent of <laughs> speaking my mind. Like a lot of things, you just, like don't really need to be said because you're going to ruffle feathers. I don't like ruffling feathers, so you know, if I'm asked a question, I'll answer, but I'm not just going to get on my phone and go. I, I went to Australia and talked to this guy. Like They, they should have brought two good-looking guys. It should have been Brownie and Brownie, not <laughs> Sam. Sam is short. He's ugly. I didn't want to let so like I'm, I'm, I'll just I'll just keep that to myself that you're ugly. Yes, he's uh, lucky he had his entourage there. Right, so yeah, I started throwing right, hands. Yeah. I could have yeah, yeah, knocked him right out. What yeah. a start! To, hey, welcome to Australia. <laughs> just imagining you thrashing machine. Just <laughs> I wouldn't have been there. <laughs> I wouldn't have been there. No, you? you would not have been there. But you could have picked me up afterwards. So uh, why is he mean to you? You uh, wet your he, pants, man. You said that. Well, he he's mean to me, but Swanee, he he came around. I've been on a fitness kick and everything, Shaq. You know that. He don't... calls himself the national brand too, Shaq. Well, hey, be a bit flat after that. Let me look at you. 
a pretty good look. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cheekbones, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah, is. Like it is. <laughs> so you got, I've Let got me it. look at you. He's loving it. Yeah, yeah. You're, pretty You're pretty good, good looking. looking. That's great. Good Thank you very yeah, much. <laughs> <laughs> there's not there's not a second between after he says you're good looking to me saying thank you. Yeah. You're pretty good looking. Thank you, very much. <laughs> Why don't you put that on your ringtone on your phone? It might, might be, you. mate. Hey might boys, be. this has gone very well. It's yeah. Going ro- yeah, it's 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 going well, fun. Well considering we're six minutes in and Brody's uh having to ship it. <laughs> Shepard shacks mine as well because they're saying wrap the interview up. Yeah, and yeah. Okay. Going, it's a good point. It would actually probably have finished now, yeah. right? But because of Bro just Pomeroy. just standing on the front line, just saying, just hold holding them back. No. We got a bit more. One so of the best. Be, keep going. Or, um, one another more. one, and we'll go have a break. Okay, come one back. more. Uh, oh, Brownie had a Brownie had a very good question. Um, one, it featured Charles again, but also it was a you know what's what's better. Right, it's Sir Charles. What's worse, his golf swing or? S- or Space Jam 2. Yeah, Space Jam 2 is true. <laughs> and Space Jam 1, I might add. Because Kazam was way better, I'll show you. Yes, John. Well, words never John. said before. Kazam was much better, I'll show you. Famously, Swanee, you know, if people have seen Charles Barkley's golf swing, it's, it's the worst Terrible. thing you've wow. ever seen in the world. Hey, uh, one more and then a break, because we've got a bit to get through. Well, we we played this earlier, but this is, uh, we brought up Aussie rules, and uh, but I absolutely, absolutely want to play it again, because, um, um, you know, I wanted Shaq to know who we were sitting with. Shaq, I don't know if you know this, but I'm Brownie, apart from being a very good-looking man. He's a Hall of Fame in Aussie rules. Do you know much about Aussie rules? I know that those guys are tough. Really tough. Thank you, Shaq. <laughs> In order to play, from 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 what I've seen, in order to play that game, you can't be soft. Mm-hmm. See, I, I look at I look at all sports. I'm a fan of all sports, but being a tough guy myself, I know who's tough and I know who's not. Like the way those that they, most of the guys that are running are physical specimens, and the way they hit, the way they fight. That so, I don't know much about the game how it's played, but like you know from the clips I've seen, where you run and you tackle people. So, if he's a Hall of Famer. He's a tough son gun. He's a tough son gun. If he's a Hall of Famer, he's a tough son gun. Thank you, Shaq. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) I have validation for my football career. Courtesy of Shaquille O'Neal. You can walk away now from everything. All right, we're halfway there. Half time. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. JB, Pang and Shaq in a hotel room. We're doing part two now. So um, before uh, before that lovely song by Amy Shah, I... I'd done the right thing and mentioned that uh, Shaq was in the presence of a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Which he was suitably impressed, for, not he? If he's a Hall of Famer, he's a tough son gun. Thank you, Shaq. Thank you, Shaq. <laughs> Brownie thought it would... Uh, that was for a little bit of theatre, by the way. Just a bit of fun. Mate, hey, don't back hey. down. It's all right. Hey. Hey. Come on, it was stone. Shush. Enough of that. I, I, Brownie felt, the, felt, it, the, uh, felt it necessary to bring up... My uh, storied uh, football career, Sonny, yes. of which, can I just not defend myself, but I'll just tell you in advance, I'm very, very proud of of uh, of the reaction we got from Shaq. He, he did enjoy it um, mm-hmm. once he realised what was taking place. The Sam used to play in the lower leagues, Shaq, yeah, that's hard to believe, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, his nickname was The Orchid. The Orchid, the orchid because... Did you play for real? Yeah, well, according to my teammates, I needed absolutely perfect conditions to thrive. Oh. <laughs> Shaq, that's not the nickname you want as a footballer, is it? Or a sports person? You play for real? Yeah, at a much lower level. Okay, I'm not a Hall of Famer. Okay, yeah. Table tennis was my go. Okay. <laughs> it's a, bit of a cultural thing, uh, Shaq. Have you got any questions about the, uh, the, the DJ? <laughs> <laughs> the orchid. <laughs> And he, he did love he the loved, orchid. He loved Swanee. it. So he also was killed over. He was he physically just, killed over. He's one of those laughers. He's one of those laughers, Swanee, where he, he kind of, you know, he's not a big laugher like, uh, like you know, yeah. ha-ha. He just went, his face just went. It is a great nickname. Not, did his face go like the laughing emoji? Yeah, like, it was the laughing emoji. Yes. Was just, yeah, wasn't you know it? what it was like? It was yes. like a little kid when they let a little peep out. Yeah, they yeah. Did. yeah. <laughs> it went like that. <laughs> the idea that this big man is like laughing like that, you know, so he loved the, he couldn't believe, couldn't believe the orchid. And thank you for bringing that up, John. Of course, one of his many uh, activities in this fair city is uh, spinning some decks. Oh, yeah, DJ Diesel. Yeah, DJ Diesel. So, Brandy asked him about DJ. DJ Diesel, you're in town. I think you're playing the Billboard Club, some of the other clubs maybe in Sydney as well. What's your go-to song to get them all up? Get the crowd up and going. I have to look at the crowd. 
So I play a specific set of music. I play bass music, hard like this yeah. music that makes you, you know, makes you want to get in the mosh pit and yeah. you want to release, re- relieve some stress. So, uh, number number five, number five, M- number number five. I don't, I don't think I have that one. <laughs> but I will download it for you. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't have Mumbo yes, number five, but yes. Shaquille O'Neal will download it yes, for you. Yes. I may uh, it, it just I just wanna I, I just wanna warn excited. you. I'm, we may play that again tomorrow with the lead balloon sound, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Hey we uh, we planned that one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure he knew <laughs> Mumbo number five. He didn't know it, no. <laughs> I was gonna reload I'm, I'm, oh, no, I'm, I'm no. disappointed I didn't. Yeah, I Mumbo number five and that reaction was perfect. Mm. Then I didn't reload with Belinda Carlisle. Yeah, yes. what do you want as a love song? I'm surprised. Do you reckon he couldn't understand you? Because everyone knows Mumbo number I think five. he couldn't understand I you. I reckon too. Yeah. Mm. Jack, where's he DJing tonight? Well, you know 170 Russell? Was yes, yeah, 370 Russell. 370 Russell. Talk about not being able to understand each other. Uh, you get there tonight for Shaq. He was, he was so softly spoken, quietly spoken. We've got mics up to our mouth. Yeah. That it was actually hard during the interview at times. I go, you sort of had to really listen intently, didn't we? Because yeah. you just can't believe this man is just so big, but how quietly spoken yeah, he is. Yeah, so incongruous. Yeah. You'd expect him to have this huge bellowing mm. voice. Hey, what, should we, do we play them all, Jackie? All or of just, them. Play all of them? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, this, uh, this one here, uh, I asked him about his... We will play number 11, Dino. We'll just, 10, so, we're up to 10. We just played 10, didn't we? No, 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 no. God. Brother! Okay, Come Dino, uh, Bra- apologise. I'm sorry, Dino. Brownie played. Uh, Brownie asked me about his DJ, and I just thought it's funny for you. You know, like karaoke is important. Yeah, I just it thought is. if you had something. What about karaoke, Shaq? Have you ever? Uh, no. Never done karaoke. No, because I can't go high. Like my voice just stays here. Like I want to go high. But I can't go high either. Like like I come from a land down under. Oh. What I say, I cannot say it no more. I've only ever heard it in tune, Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Peggy's well clip. Pop, pop that. Pop that, you call me ugly for 10 minutes. I'm going to clip you. You know when Peggy Ooh, said... Whatever. You know when Peggy... <laughs> You know, Peggy said that he was hiding around the corner and just whispered <laughs> no, into the microphone. He, was, he added was, that in, he added was, that in this end. morning. I was behind Brownie when that. Are you insane, by the way? We're going to skip that grab? Uh, Jesus mate, I don't Christ. know. What, he, I got no idea. He made, up, he made up the words. And I can just see you both looking at him going, Shaquille O'Neal just made up words that clearly don't <laughs> exist in this iconic song. What do we say? He'd be good at CSB Idol. That game we play. Oh, I love that the song. All right, we're can, gonna... I, can I have that again? I know that. We're, look, we're late anyway. <sighs> I just love it, using Shaquille. Oh, the best. All right, here we go. What about karaoke, Shaq? Have you ever... Uh, no. Never done karaoke? No, because I can't go high. Like, my voice just stays here. Like, I want to go high. No, I can't go high either. Like, like, I come from a land down under. Oh. What I say, I cannot say it no more. I've only, do, 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 do. I've only ever heard it in tune, Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in, in, in hindsight, I have some small sound, regrets about that. The sound's so well, I'm good. Lucky I'm never going to see him again. I can it's see not like I'm, not like I'm interviewing or anything. Again, when, I, you know? when I hear it, I hear, I've only ever heard it in tune, Jack. I see you very quickly afterwards going... I said that from behind, Brandy. Yeah. <laughs> and he whispered into the microphone, oh, so man. it was inaudible to Shaq. Yeah, well, no, all it's good, Dino. Mate, that's the thing, all good. Uh, we're going to keep going, aren't yeah, we? Going, so that was scary. All right, well, well <laughs> either myself or Brandy could have asked this, but we wanted to know who he's he's played with a lot of a lot of uh, teams and a lot of players. We wanted to know who his craziest teammate was, and I think you'll know the name of the answer. Whatever you always wanted to ask him, you're a massive basketball fan. Who's your craziest teammate and why? Dennis Rodman. <laughs> yeah, but he's the guy that he does his job exceptionally well. You gotta let him go. Like he would come so seven o'clock game. If you're at the 5.30, you get fined. He'd come in at 6.30. Wow. While we're going over the game strategy, eating chicken and rice, not even paying attention, just eating fast. <laughs> and then when we go warm up, wow. he'll take a cold shower and then come out and get 27, 28 rebounds. <laughs> when he, after the game, he'll put his clothes on, no shower, and go to the club, and he'll have the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. So on the team with Kobe and myself and him, he was a celebrity. I went to one of his parties because I'm the, look, 
I'm a party guy. I throw the best parties around the world. I went to a couple of his parties. I've never seen nothing like that. And the guy just got 26 rebounds, didn't take a shower, and had supermodels all over him. And I'd just be sitting there like, like the girls would just walk past me and go to dinner and I'd be like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so him, he was, but like he couldn't say, hey man, like, because I wasn't getting 27 rebounds a night. Like I could do it once a month, but like he was doing that every night. Wow. Yes. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> and he didn't skip a beat when you said who was your craziest Dennis Rodman. <laughs> did not hesitate, no, Tony. Didn't did not think hesitate. about it. Yeah. Hey, uh, Brownie's got a couple of big ones to finish. Well, you know, we'll, we'll, might, we'll play it, we might play this again with our normal bells and whistles, but he, Brownie did have to ask the question that he asks uh, all, the, uh, all the athletes. I always ask the athletes when they're on our show, how much did you bench in your prime? So my max at one time was 475. Pants. Yeah. So about, I, I did it twice one time. When I was really into lifting, I could probably get 415 now if I really try. But I haven't, like, my, my shoulder's been acting up, so I'll, I'll just, I'll start off at uh, 225 and then go 275 and then end up with a uh, 315. But if I go 30, 40 <laughs> days straight, like, I can get back up to 400. Swanny, you're doing the conversion I as am. we speak. What, what is for, 215 is kilos. kilos. <laughs> There's a new record holder on this show. Yeah. Highest bench. The gonna... previous was Fraser Garrick, 175 kilos. Two former St. Kilda West Coast that. player, but we're this man. We're going to do that again tomorrow, but with all our bells. Yes, 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 all right. Uh, I wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have joined you, but it would have been very, very weird. Yeah, it would have just wouldn't, wouldn't have been right. Mm. Um, Brad, uh, he's been he's an actor, Swan. He's been in films. True. So, uh, of course, Brad. He's not a great actor. Hey, Whoa. take that back. He won a couple of uh, Razzies. Uh, Razzies. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, they're, they're not official rankings anyway. Brownie asked him what we what we all wait for. I've got to finish with my, uh, well, well, I'd say it's a famous question. Samuel L. Jackson didn't think so, but I did. Uh, you've been in Blue Chips. You started your acting career Blue Chips, Grown Ups, Smurfs, Lego, plenty of other ones. I always ask the famous actors, you are one of them, how do you remember your lines? So sometimes I study, or sometimes I cram it when I get there. Yeah. Because, you know, like, Let's just say it's 30 lines, and I can shoot 30 lines. So you ask them, hey, where, where are we stopping at? We're stopping right here. So I just memorize them at a thing. And then if I don't know them, I'll just say whatever. When he asked that to Samuel, he, when he asked that to Samuel Jackson, how do you remember your line? Samuel Jackson looked him in the eye and said, it's my job, mother Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, Great in the, interview, guys. What? Well, yeah, you in the background when he starts answering, you just see a pen go, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> was it really thrilling? One more. It was a big thrill. It was a thrill. I was very happy to, to be doing it with Brownie because yeah. we were on kind of, you know, foreign soil. It wasn't, it would have yeah. been, you know, we always love it if, if um, interviews come in here, but mm. I just will finish with this. This is the like, this is kind of a bit off mic, and it's all it's all wrapped up, and it's been great. But I tell you, it's funny the, he did he did really like the nickname the awkward. Shaquille O'Neal, we can't thank you enough, and um, enjoy your stay in, in Australia. Thank you very much. Whoa! Oh, how yeah, good, Zach. Thank you, Hall of Famer. <laughs> thank you, Shaq. Hall of Famers first. If I was back in my prime table tennis games, it'd be on right now. I know, Will. Blossom. <laughs> <laughs> orchid. Orchid. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Orchid. <laughs> you guys hug Shaq? You hug Shaq? No, we yeah, hugged him. Great. You know what? No, I went to shake his hand. You gave me the old, uh, whoops, you know, the whole yeah. uh, take the hand yeah, away. Yeah, that? it went straight to the Hall of Famer, and then he called me Blossom. Then he goes, mate, it was a... Very surreal. Great handshake. <laughs> well, compared feet size, I was wearing the biggest I could find. Yeah. Yes. Size 15. He's a, he was size 23, I think. So oh, it was amazing. Did you get photos? Did Absolutely. We, get... we got photos. Great. Sam looks like a little preschooler beside him. I stacked up not too bad, but it was a fantastic experience. Oh, did you realize that right, John? Yeah. <laughs> no, right. Up, yeah. Amazing, boys. You can watch it. You can watch him tomorrow night, too, on main event from 7.30. On so KO. On KO. Go to that or Foxtel. Uh, podcast. You can watch him sit down with Mark Howard. Podcast to show if you want to hear the whole thing. It was amazing. And the unsung hero of the whole thing, behind the scenes, Brody Pomeroy, just fighting off. Right. Well, they were very, very lovely in there, but yeah. I didn't realise they were wrapping us up. And Brody went to, he went to, went to, went to fight. He's like Clint Eastwood in the line of fire. <laughs> Mate, Good he was boy, like, Brody. it's like a Mel Gibson in Greyfart. Hold, yeah. hold. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie, Ripper Show will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Unless it's a weekend. Area 100.